So, what does an argument look like? Well, a simple example of a argument looks like this. You start with the premises. All dogs are animals. And Steve is a dog. So there we have two premises. And following on from this, you lead to a conclusion. And you might be able to work out that in this case, the conclusion is therefore Steve is an animal. All dogs are animals. Steve is a dog. Therefore, Steve is an animal. So how does this connect with what we have learned earlier? Well, it's not written in the most straightforward way. And this is leading towards quantifiers and quantifier logic, which involves an awful lot of X's. And we're going to veer off at this point. Let's make this argument into a slightly more straightforward one. So let's make the argument specific to Steve. If we put it that way, we can say, if Steve is a dog, then Steve is an animal. Steve is a dog. So those again are our two premises and our conclusion remains the same. Therefore, Steve is an animal. So what we have here is two simple statements in a certain arrangement. And if you think about it for a moment, what is that arrangement going to be? What it's actually going to be is a conjunction of the premises. And those two premises, as a conjunction, will imply the conclusion if the argument is good. And so that means there should be a conditional relationship between the premises and the conclusion. So looking at that expression, we have the first conditional, premise 1, in brackets. The conjunction with P, premise 2. And we could put all of that in brackets if we want to make it clear what the whole premise conjunction is, but we don't need to. The dominance of connectives means that we do all of that before we do the conditional with Q, which in this case is our conclusion. So what we're now interested in is what is the concept of validity? So validity is what typically makes a good line of logical reasoning. And that's because validity claims that the premises of an argument in conjunction, as we just saw, always imply the conclusion. And by imply, we mean a conditional. So in the case above, we would put it in a truth table like this. It has four rows. And first we do the conditional of P and Q. That is premise one. And that just gives us a regular conditional output. True, false, true, true. Then we put that in conjunction with P. So that gives us true, false, false, false. If we quickly run down that. Now, that green column represents the conjunction of all our premises. So that is the column we will place in conditional with the conclusion, Q. And that gives us an output of true in every single case. So what a valid argument means is that in every possible case, of every possible true or false value of the premises, all of the possible outputs will be true. So we're not talking about only if the premises are true. An argument's validity does not say anything about its truth. The truth of the premises will determine that. But all we're saying is that there is no combination of P and Q which will lead to a true antecedent and a false consequent in this case. And the antecedent is, of course, our green column because we're talking about the conditional between all the premises and the conclusion.
So looking at a few examples, just have a quick guess. Is the following example valid or invalid? So if I study, then I will pass math. I didn't pass math, therefore I didn't study. Well, I can tell you that this is a valid argument and it might seem that there is a possibility of you studying hard and still not passing maths. Well, that is fine and it is perfectly reasonable that that could happen, but it is still perfectly valid for me to suppose that the reason you didn't path, pass math is because you actually didn't study. So again, we see that the validity of an argument does not imply the truth of it. If we want to show that it is valid, then we first work out the conditional as before, and this time the second premise is not Q. So if we put the conditional together with not Q in a conjunction, we get false, 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 true. And so then into a conditional with not P, false into false is true, false into false again, false into true and true into true. That is all of the outputs that give a true result. And we do not have the only one that gives false from a conditional. So here we have a tautology and that means the argument is valid. This is also known as the law of contraposition or modus tollens. And of course, as we said, it is still possible that you studied hard, but you just couldn't keep it in or whatever. For some reason, there was another possible way that you could not pass math. However, that doesn't matter. The argument itself is still valid. So again, if you are healthy, then you are wealthy. You are wealthy, therefore you are healthy. And the sharp-eyed among you may have already spotted why this is not valid on an intuitive level. You can see that the if then goes in one direction, but the link between premise two and the conclusion clearly goes in the other direction. There are no biconditionals here, so this is not a valid argument. We put the conditional in and then we put it in conjunction with Q and that gives us true, false, true, false. Then putting that in another conditional with P, we end up with true, true, false, true. So just to run through that in the first line, the green is true and P is true. That's true for a conditional. False into true is true for a conditional. But then we have true into false. The green column is true and P is false. And that is the only situation where a conditional is false. False into false is true, but that doesn't matter. Only one false is enough to stop this from being a valid argument. This is also known as the fallacy of affirming the consequent. So you can see as a final note that when P and Q are both true, then this argument is true. So it might seem uh, considering only that line as though this is a perfectly good argument, but validity does not work like that. It needs to be true in all possible cases in order to be good logic. Otherwise, it's just coincidence. So this example might demonstrate that if the moon is cheese, then two equals one. The moon is made of cheese, therefore two equals one. Isn't it obvious? So if you think back on this one, it might seem familiar to you. It is actually the same form of argument that we saw when we talked about Steve the dog, and it made perfect sense back then. We look at it again though, if P then Q, P therefore Q. If Steve is a dog, then Steve is an animal. Steve is a dog, therefore Steve is an animal. 
It was valid back then and it's valid now, exactly the same thing. It's actually called the law of detachment or modus ponens. But the thing is, in this case, the premises are false. So even if your argument, your logic is valid, that doesn't mean that the premises you are using are automatically true. However, this line of logic is valid even though the premises we're putting in are false. The moon is not made of cheese and two does not equal one. In this case, the conclusion is also false. So despite being false in almost every way, it is nonetheless a valid argument. And finally, if I work hard, then I will graduate, and if I graduate, I will succeed. Therefore, if I work hard, I will succeed. So, as a symbolic argument, we can now see that there are three simple statements, and on top of that, the conclusion is no longer a single statement, but it is now a conditional. However, if we follow through the processes we've learned, we can do exactly the same thing here as for every other truth table. We have eight columns. I'll put in the true and false values here. And we start off with our two premises, which are both conditionals. So if we go down both those columns and apply conditional logic, we have this column for the red conditional and this column for the orange conditional. And we take those two columns and we put them in conjunction relationship with each other. And that gives us the green column there, which is the conjunction of all the premises. Now, before we finish off with our final conditional, we do have to resolve the truth outputs of the conclusion, which is itself its own conditional. So we have to work those out, and that's the blue column as seen there. And so finally, we put the premises, the green column, in a conditional relationship with the conclusion, which is the blue column, and that gives us a nice column of T's. This is indeed a valid argument, and it's known as the law of syllogism. If P then Q, if Q then R, therefore if P then R.